Testing. Testing. I was at, at the Radcliffe Institute writing um, mostly short stories, and I um, was there with my two-year-old daughter, and it was a real struggle, as, as all of you who have children would understand, to write, to be a mother, to teach courses, to deal with the snow, the ice. We were both sick a lot. Uh, and at one point, though, I realized that I was, it was still okay because we, we were doing all that we could do. I was writing, she was going to the Radcliffe Play School. Um, so this is one of the poems that came out of that period that I used to keep on a, a little board above my desk so, so that I could remind myself that it was okay. Now that the book is finished, now that I know my characters will live, I can love my child again. She needs sit no longer at the back of my mind, the lonely sucking of her thumb, a giant stopper in my throat. And then this is another one that we eventually moved back to Mississippi. Uh, and I, I still held this sense that even though most women writers in the past did not have children. Uh, it was still okay for me to have my daughter because we were just gonna be. We were just gonna do whatever it took uh, for me to be a writer with a child and her to be a child with a writer as a mother. Um, I'm still fairly optimistic. I don't know about her. <laughs> anyway, and this is this I wrote to myself. Dear Alice, Virginia Woolf had madness. George Eliot had ostracism, somebody else's husband, and did not dare to use her own name. Jane Austen had no privacy and no love life. The Bronte sisters never went anywhere and died young and dependent on their father. Zora Hurston, ah, had no money and poor health. You have Rebecca, who is much more delightful and less distracting than any of the calamities above. 